I've got a weird thing going on where I've got complete areas of numbness and then hypersensitivity of pain. So it'd be like nothing, nothing, nothing. Ah, that hurts. Oh my God, what are you doing? And that means that having sex of any kind is very difficult. Do you think if you were actually a trans woman that you would be a little bit more happy with what you have down there? Ah, I was. Uh, I, still was be miserable? I was a trans woman for all impacts. And I am, definitely. I was a trans woman. I, I wasn't cis all this time. I had gender dysphoria. But what really shouldn't have happened is I shouldn't have had the surgery to begin with. So you had a recent thread on Twitter go viral, right? It was all about going through a gender or sex transition, getting bottom surgery, all the horrible things you have experienced during this all, which is like unbelievable, to be honest. What is your name and when and exactly how did you transition? My name is Richie. I transitioned in 2014 when I was 26. That involved an anti-androgen called Zoloft Gosrillin on estradiol. And so what the Gosrillin does is blocks your testosterone and the estradiol gives you estrogen. And then in 2018, I had the surgery. The surgery. <laughs> the, the main surgery. surgery. They call it bottom surgery because it's arse, by the way. Nothing. I don't call it genital re reassignment surgery or any shit like that. Penile inversion with a scroll graft. It's, it's extremely okay. brutal surgery. Like your urethra changes, your obviously your prostate moves. I say obviously, a lot of people don't know this. It definitely, it completely alters your whole down below. It, it it tries to create a character of a female vagina. Why did you choose to speak out about all of this, all the things you've been through? I didn't see any male detransitioners that had a voice in this. Males, when they did speak out, were kind of beholden to... A lot of the, the hardcore rad femmes, very, very difficult for any one of us to speak out because there's a lot of shame, there's a lot of harassment. I've used the internet for, I'm kind of immune to it. Like, I don't really care what someone on the internet says to us. So I knew I would be okay in speaking out. And that's one of the reasons why I did it, because I knew that I could, and I knew that there wasn't enough representation. I wanted people to know what was happening. What exactly has happened because you, you have a viral Twitter thread that has over 40,000 likes, which is huge because what did you have? 300 followers at the time. So clearly <laughs> this like, struck a chord. Like you said, nobody that's a D trans man has much of a voice, right? They're propping up trans women all over the place. They're propping up trans men a little bit less, even less than that are D trans women and even less than that are D trans men. What exactly happened to you? You always hear about fucking how amazing surgery is and I'm and I'm sat here in the background, known for a fact that even trans people who have had it have got massive problems, huge issues of numbness. Like the amount of trans women that have got zero sensation down there is fucking devastating. The issues I've been having for, for the first three years, I was convinced myself, it'll get better. It'll, you know, it's just part of the healing. And, and it never did. It never got better. So some of the issues I have is I've got a weird thing going on where I've got complete areas of numbness. And then hypersensitivity of pain. So it'd be like nothing, nothing, nothing. Ah, that hurts. Oh my God, what are you doing? Um, and that means that having sex of any kind is very difficult. But for me, the main thing was the urethral issues, like not being able to pee. After surgery, I had a catheter in and when they took it out, my urethra was completely constricted. So if you imagine a straw that's bent and you're trying to suck through that straw, you, you can't because it's like constricted. I was in the worst agony for months. I had a few follow-up surgeries to try and get that fixed. And now I'm, I'm in this rigmarole now of every three or four years, I need to get another urethral dilation. I can't have sex, don't have a sex drive. I didn't see really anyone talking about it. And even trans people do the whole, yeah, I've got no numbness, but it's better than what I had. And it's just like, it's not, this isn't better. You, you deserve much better than that. I know the question was, if it went all well, would I be happy? I don't think so. I think this helped me wake up sooner than later but i don't think i should have had it anyway i think i actually enjoyed having what i had really shouldn't have happened full stop i didn't want it but they kept asking and asking and i was also getting therapy at the time and they said if you don't want surgery we'll we'll have to discharge you and i was like in the middle of therapy with them and i was like fuck so i was like okay then fine and i went to see me therapist and then I can't remember exactly what we talked about in that therapy session, but it ended up me ringing the psychiatrist to get us referred. So it was like, there was always that your doubts are managed no matter what. 
and um, they will kind of keep you on the path sort of thing. And then after surgery, when it was going horrible. Did you have partial gender dysphoria then? Is that what it is? Like you had I gender body. dysphoria and I'm not not trans. I right, was right, trans. Right. It just happens that this wasn't the right path for you. No, transition, you like it, it might have been OK for the first few years, but surgery, definitely not. And okay. I think for me, that transition probably wasn't the answer long term, but short term, maybe. And surgery, definitely not. It was fucking stupid. Can you explain some of the things that can happen when bottoms, when getting bottom surgery that people don't talk about? Because I know um, this is this is another thing that I had no idea any of these things happened. Because I, I haven't, I mean, obviously I'm not trans. I haven't looked that far into it, but I know a lot of people that think that they're trans are looking into it. And I want them to hear straight from the source. Your most common issue is you're going to get an infection post-surgery. It's very rare you don't. You're going to get an infection. And now an infections or whatever, you can deal with that. And then there's the worst infections, the infections that are that deal that end in necrosis. So necrosis is the process of your skin rotting off and falling off and dying. That can happen if the healing and the nerves are damaged too much. So you can get like that can happen internally. It can happen externally. It's not common, but it's not rare. The other issue you have is you've got prolapse which is about one in 250 where everything just falls out. And that's devastating. Urinary issues, which are extremely common. And the most common is no sensation. Overwhelming. Like, I don't know what the rate is, but... This, I know this, all, this all makes sense, though. Like, Because I've been doing videos about trans women specifically for years, right? Because I focus more on trans women than trans men. I read a statistic at one point, maybe it was three, four years ago, maybe now it's different. But back then it was like 80% of trans women still have their penises. And and I'm thinking this is probably the reason why. There was also a study that has shown that when trans women get their their penis inverted, whatever we want to call it, bottom surgery, that they're more susceptible to depression. So it's, and that could be the hormone issues that come around, you know, after so after having it i mean there's a lot of possible issues that i feel like people aren't talking about kids are going into this way too soon without looking into any other possible issues that they may have right you said that yeah. when you you said that when you went to a therapist they kind of just affirmed you and didn't yeah, they, look too far into other mental health issues right and i came in with diagnoses and i told them what was going on and it just it just got railroaded in a uh, trans affirmation to the point that after surgery when i begin to show signs of regret it got blamed on me on cd when you take when you have general anesthetic it lowers your serotonin levels and that increases your ocd so you're not actually regretting this. This is just because of the anesthetic. So I'd keep coming back. I'm like, I'm still regretting it. I'm still regretting it. I don't and think the anesthesia is still on me three months later. I'm still regretting it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Like... It's still like that. Still like that. And then right. you went, oh, well, it appears this is OCD related. So we need to get you checked for OCD. And that really pissed me off because I came into the gender clinic with an OCD diagnosis and I was begging for help with it. The, the took us through surgery but they wouldn't take us through the OCD treatment until after. They should have done all this beforehand, for sure. Yeah. Why do you think that do trans people aren't getting any coverage in mainstream media? We'll crack the narrative in two. We'll, we'll break it all down and we'll put everything into question because a detransitioner um, shits on the idea that a trans person is like inherently trans from birth. And, and it also um, shits on the idea that transition physical transition is always the way to go and it's the only yeah. way to go it doesn't just mean that to me it doesn't mean that you don't have gender dysphoria it just means that not it doesn't mean that it just means that transitioning physically hormonally whatever you want to call yeah. it isn't not for everybody i have another friend that's very similar to you did not get gender uh did not get bottom surgery did get top surgery and and i'm going to say he because i think that's how they identify now he re regrets having top surgery now after six seven years and regrets going on medication, regrets yeah. going on the hormones. So it's sad. It's the main reason I wanted to have you on is because I want to make sure that people, especially teenagers, young teenagers that think they're trans, know what they're getting themselves into, right? It's not just, oh, I'm going to go on hormone blockers for a few years, right? 
that also has complication. There, there's complications with that. So I have a question from my friend Sarah. I've seen you advocate restrictions on transitioning, even for adults. My question is, what would you say to somebody who believes that an adult has the right to do what they want with their own bodies without gatekeeping? And at what point do you believe it comes down to personal responsibility to ensure that any modifications that they make is what's right for them? Because I do think your story is how we give those thinking about transitioning all the information that they need. Have all the checks and balances been done? Like, blame is meaningless. What matters is, are there stop signs? Are the speed limits? Are we going down a road that has got zero rules? And people are crashing left, right, and center because there's no signs, there's no speed limits. And that's how I view it. It's like, if you had a car crash, you wouldn't want to ban all cars. You would want to make the road safer. You might want to make that car safer. Or it could be a, a bit of legislation and law. And that's what I think we're at. I think we're on a highway with no rules and people are crushing left, right, and center and be like, yeah, but we need this highway. So yeah, no, no rules, like, meaning no, no basic actual definition yeah. for what being so trans I'm is. Not saying, I'm not saying close the highway. I'm saying put some paint on the road, some signs, maybe some warning maybe. signs. Right. Yeah, maybe even some professionals who can help people who are stuck or break down you can put all these little measures in to limit the damage. And we don't have it. We've just got this open highway go. Do you think we're going to continue to see more and more detransitioners speak out? Yes. Oof, yeah. You didn't even hesitate answering that. I hope this video at least I hope this video at least saves some people from having to experience what you did. And I think you're very brave for sharing your story I truly really do hope that people will watch this and and at least question themselves a bit more what would you like someone who might think they're trans or someone that is trans what would you like them to know what i ask every trans person to do is take the concept of gender dysphoria and break it down break it down completely into all its little bits and try and see what what it could have possibly been if not gender dysphoria low self-esteem issues you know which is a symptom of gender dysphoria that could be a symptom of many other things depression anxiety are a symptom of gender dysphoria i'm sorry but they could be symptom of many other things and i think what we need to do is we need to break out break it down for everyone so they can see themselves could that be related to attachment issues with new parents could that be related to neurodivergence like ADHD and autism or OCD? Could it be related to bullying? Could it be related to same-sex attraction? You know, I don't feel like that work is getting done. I feel like people lump it all in and gender dysphoria, as I did, and be like, ah, it's just that one thing. Where can people find you? Do you want to have them follow on you on your Twitter? Or... Yeah, my Twitter. Okay, At so your tulip. Twitter is uh, it's twitter.com slash tulip with tulip r with two l's make sure you go and follow richie on twitter and me as well if you haven't already let us know what you think in the comments about about this all and we'll see you guys on twitter and back here in a few days with a brand new video say bye say bye richie thank you ariel all right thank you bye, bye, -bye.